hello pega people welcome back to pega interview series part 2 video i hope these videos will help you to crack the pega interview if anyone is looking for pega training please contact the scrolling number so we'll move on to interview hi harsha hi ma'am good morning good morning shall we continue with our interview sure ma'am let's start with our first question okay to a file listener instead of csv file if we use xml file what will happen okay to a file listener which is configured to consume a csv file if we are going to place an excel file sorry an xml file then file listener is going to successfully pick the file but there will be a failure in the execution during the parse structure because the parse delimited rule we have created for comma separated csv file so it will fail with xml file parsing so we will get a runtime exception in this case to a file listener instead of csv file if we use xml file what will happen to a file listener which is configured to read and process csv files if we are going to place an xml file in the path then file listener will be able to successfully pick the xml file but only problem is as file file listener service files uh, parse rule is configured as parse delimited rule created as parse delimited rule during the processing of xml file it will fail okay we would have created a parse xml rule and utilized it for parsing xml but as we have parse delimited rule in the service file rule it is going to give a runtime exception okay we'll move into our next question other than csv file what are the file formats that file file is the supports okay file listener supports xml files excel files text files and even if we have requirement we can even go with html files and there are so many different file formats that listener can support in a case type how a work object will move from one stage to another stage please explain the internal mechanism during a case processing a work object is going to move from one stage to another stage internally there will be an otb activity that gets executed called as px change stage so in the case type settings in the case type rule under the settings tab sorry in the case type rule under stages tab we are going to choose an option automatically move to next stage when the previous stage gets completed this option is going to invoke otb activity px change stage that is going to move the work object to the next stage from the current stage okay we'll move on to another question on case type okay how a case can jump from primary stage to alternate stage what are the different ways to implement it a case can jump from primary stage to alternate stage by using two ways one is we can use change change to a stage automation shape or we can use utility flow shape and in the utility flow shape we can call one otb activity px change stage so these are the two different ways where case can jump from primary stages to alternate stages okay harsha okay next question will be on decision tables okay i want to call decision table from activity what are the parameters need to pass decision table from activity can be called in two different ways one is using property map decision table method we can call when calling from property map decision table method we have to pass the parameters of decision table name and resulting property and also allow missing properties checkbox this is optional and the other way around is in a normal property set method also we can call decision table by using functions we can go to expression builder there we have a function called px evaluate decision table we need to pass two parameters to it primary page name and decision table name that is going to execute the decision table okay we move on to next question okay you said right allow missing properties checkbox okay. what is the use of it yeah i'll tell you allow missing properties checkbox in decision while calling decision table from activity whenever a decision table is called suppose i have called one decision table which has three properties in its logic condition but at the time of calling the decision table from the activity on clipboard only two properties are there this is now going to result into an exception because decision table expects three properties to be used in the condition but by the time it gets executed only two properties are there on clipboard one property is missing 
Now to handle this internal exception, Pega provides an exception handling mechanism called as hello missing properties checkbox while calling the decision table. By selecting this option, Pega ignores the missing properties and evaluates the condition only with the remaining two properties, whatever that is available on clipboard. That's how exception handling mechanism is handled and provided by Pega using this option of hello missing properties checkbox. Let me ask you next question on report definition. How do you call report definition from activity? A report definition rule can be called from activity by using PX retrieve report data over TV activity. That means in our activity, we need to call OTB activity PX retrieve report data, which is from rule OBJ report definition class. So if there is no inheritance relation from calling activity to PX retrieve report data, then the way to call is call rule OBJ report definition dot PX retrieve report data. It takes three parameters. One is report definition name. Second one is result page. And third one is the class in which report definition rule is created. Then when this step is executed, result is going to come on to clipboard on the respect to page, whatever we mentioned in the parameter, let's say page one, page one dot PX results. Okay, let's continue with report definition rule. Harsha, can you tell me what is the purpose of class join in report definition? Sure. The purpose of class join in report definition rule is whenever there is a need of retrieving the data from more than one table, let's say two tables or three tables or four tables, then we can implement join conditions between multiple tables. Now, if you want to retrieve from table A and table B, then we have to create report definition rule in table A and in the data access tab of report definition rule, there is an option called class join. Then we have to go to add class join and mention the second table for second table class from which we want to retrieve the data. Then there should be a common value column between these two tables so that we can retrieve matching records. So to retrieve the data from more than one table by matching with some uh, common value columns, we can fetch the data by using report definition rule. In this case, we will be using class joins. There are even other types of joins also which we can use like index joins and also associations and sub reports. 